the Cougar Tailgate, where BYU fandom lives. Here's your host, Lauren McClain. What is up, Cougar fans? The basketball schedule changed one more time, coming down the home stretch. Shocking, I know. And the guys have taken it in stride yet again. We have wins to recap, fans in the stands, and a season finale to get ready for. Coming back for more and joining me from the BYU Radio Studios is our boss, Junior. Welcome back to the Cougar Tailgate, my friend. Hey, very happy to be here. It's it's a fun season. Kind of sad it's wrapping up, but really excited for March. I know. Well, you, you're you going to be very busy. The WCC tourney is going to be March 4th through 9th. What should fans expect from that? Um, well, it's it's going to be interesting. It's going to be different. They're going to keep the same seating where BYU – so both BYU men's and women's, it looks like, have pretty much locked up the uh, two seed with Gonzaga locking up the one in all of those. But they won't play until Monday. But uh, the, the, team, the games will start on the 4th on that Thursday – um, normally we would have all of the women's games on BYU TV leading up to the championship, but unfortunately San Diego, they were third in the conference and the women's, the women's team has had to bow out with COVID. So we'll have one uh. game. I know it's the most heartbreaking thing. And it's not like they're a team that was, you know, down, they were, they were third place. They were having a great season. They were. They've got a great coach and stuff, and it just it's heartbreaking to see. I think that's the hardest part of athletics is to see these athletes that work so hard and you know aren't able to finish off the season. So we'll only I'm sure have... they're like, who was it? Who had it? <laughs> <laughs> they're all uh, ganging up on her. <laughs> no. I'm just kidding. I'm, I hope they're not actually doing that, but I'm sure they're sort of thinking it, especially those seniors. They're like, how dare you do this? I know. This was our chance. Um, but yeah, so yeah, then it'll be off and off and running from there, but we're, we're excited and an interesting twist this year, the, um, with all of the cancellations of games and things like that and broadcast rights, the men's tournament, the first two games or first four games, excuse me, Thursday and Friday, two Thursday, two Friday of the men's will be on stadium instead of BYU okay. TV, unfortunately, but it's kind of the way things those run. Jerks. Nah, it's one of those. You know what? They missed a bunch of games, and so we let them. We let them have them, I guess. But no, we're we're really excited about this. Both the men and women have a very very good chance. The women beat Gonzaga last week, so they know how to do it. And the women, they have had great runs in the WCC tournament. The men have fallen short. Uh, for many, many years, <laughs> barely short. So yeah. there could be some no, – because Gonzaga was considering not playing both on the men's and the women's side, but it looks like they're both going to play now. So that that's a little bit – I mean, I I don't know what you think, Junior, but I was going to say a little bit heartbreaking for BYU fans because this was kind of BYU's chance to win the championship if Gonzaga was just going to be like, all right, we're going to the tournament anyway, we're not going to play. So now you throw back number one Gonzaga in the country and it's going to be – really really hard to win the wcc tournament yet again but hey crazier things have happened crazier you know? things have happened hey the last time gonzaga was undefeated when did that end byu so hey so that's what we're hoping for and and hey you never know the last time fun, kind of a, a i don't know if we want to call it a fun fact but a fact is the last <laughs> time byu won a conference tournament 2001 yes unlv did not play Wow. In that tournament because of uh, NCAA violations. So, well, it's the 20 year. It's the 20 year. 20 so, year, you know. What is it? No. Yeah. Anniversary. No. I don't know what you call that, but. I, I kind of, you know, it's one of those two. The good thing about playing number one Gonzaga is all the pressures on Gonzaga in that because, hey, if BYU goes out and loses, oh, well, hey, you lost to the number one team in the country. You gave it a good fight. You win. It's huge. And, you know, big stage and stuff. So I'm excited. I I like, out of all the games that they've played, there's not going to be fans at the WCC tournament, unfortunately. But that being said, there's no fans for Gonzaga, who always show up really well. BYU and Gonzaga always show up well at the West Coast Conference tournament. But no one's getting in this year. So you're going to – everyone's going to have to watch it from their couch <laughs> and stuff. So it'll be it – it, it could even the playing field just a little bit. It could even that playing field just a little bit. And, and hey, this is this is the time where magic happens. Um, all of the Cinderella stories and stuff like that. And, and come on, let's be honest. If BYU win, 
win would win that game Tuesday against Gonzaga, that would be so amazing. You know, right? Start to March. Well, they, oh yeah, it would be it would be absolutely incredible. And honestly, BYU is the team who's hung with Gonzaga better than any other team in the WCC, losing by just eleven. Which I mean, that's a decent amount of points but on when it comes to playing number one Gonzaga who honestly is a different team this year they are just playing on a different level so for BYU to hang in uh and but lose by just 11 points is, is really great and honestly makes me think if BYU is firing on all cylinders they could have a shot they, they're gonna have to be shooting lights out though yeah but and, hey uh, so speaking of shooting lights out Alex Barcelo seven of seven from three Last right? or on uh, Alex Barcelo, seven of seven from three on Thursday night. That was yes, big. He had twenty nine points. It was huge. Yeah, he's going to have to have a game like that again, and, along with the other nine players on the team, <laughs> in yeah. order to beat Gonzaga. Honestly, but you know who is incredible right now or had an incredible comeback is the women's team. Oh my! They gosh. were playing. They were playing Santa Clara. They were down 18 with six minutes left in the third quarter, and they came back and won. And you were telling me, Junior, that that would have been really detrimental for that BYU women's team if they lost since they are really trying hard to get in that tournament. Yeah, well, and, and you know, they, they have a chance to be an at-large in the NCAA tournament and stuff, and so they're kind of a bubble team on that. But they're they're 13-2 and two in conference, and, and they beat number one Gonzaga. Um, so losing to Santa Clara. Now, Santa Clara... They're the fourth place team in the women's, but it's still not a bit, not a great, wouldn't have been a, a good loss. So it was a big comeback. And, and Juddy uh, at halftime said, he told the women, we can't win this in one shot. We got to do this piece by piece by piece to get back. And that's kind of how they did. They got back, got tied it up early in the fourth quarter and just kind of took a lead and never really relinquished. All right, now we sort of alluded to it last week, but the WCC, by the power invested in them, changed everyone's schedule <laughs> for this final week of play. As of a couple weeks ago, BYU was slated to play Santa Clara on Thursday and then be done. But by the nature of the rotating conference schedule, that was the only Santa Clara matchup for the season. So that was wiped off the board, and in their place we had San Francisco Thursday and St. Mary's tonight at home in the Marriott Center with fans nonetheless. So how many fans were allowed in that BYU game on Thursday night? It was about 1,700 fans and stuff, and they did a great okay. job. They gave 500 tickets to The Rock, which if you're going to let fans in, you got to let The Rock in. But Of course. That, they're going to make the difference, right? Yeah. And no, no offense to BYU fans. I love them so much, but there are some, there are some uh, lifers. You know, that sit in the stands and they don't like you to stand up in front of them. They don't even like you to be loud. So definitely if you're going to give away those tickets and make a difference in the game, it's got to be to the rock. You got you to let the rock in. But no, it was, yep. it was great. And I think, I mean, credit to BYU administration for allowing this to celebrate these three seniors and stuff for senior night. And, and really kudos to the conference. I mean, these are the games that we all want to see um, against San Francisco. It was a tough thing. San Francisco just would not go away um, <laughs> and stuff. And, and that St. Mary's, you know, yeah, we all want to beat Gonzaga. But there's just something about beating St. Mary's that's almost as good, you know. Just love. Oh, yeah. oh who almost. doesn't love? We we had some fun with it uh, with Tyler Hawes this week where we kind of did a deep fake with the uh, erase the Dell of a dagger. Um <laughs> what what would have happened if it would have missed? I think it made Tyler's life. He was actually asking for a copy of it. I think he's going to use it so he can show his kids of the time he hit the last second <laughs> shot to beat St. Mary's. He's going to feed them with lies he's, their hey. entire lives. And they're, in this internet age, he's got to be careful, man. They're going to look it up and realize their dad's been lying to their whole life. I don't blame him, though, because that was – see, that's what's fun about playing St. Mary's is – I feel like for some reason with Gonzaga, BYU has won handily. Those wins that they've gotten against them, it's actually it hasn't really necessarily come down to the last second in most of them. With St. Mary's, it almost always comes down to a last second shot. Oh. It's just it's just crazy and that's what makes that rivalry so much fun in my opinion. No, it, you're absolutely right. And we were we were actually teasing Tyler and like, you know, TJ hit the game-winning shot against St. Mary's and got a win. <laughs> what happened with yours? No, but oh, those that's are cold. That is cold. But we love Tyler. 
But no, I mean it's He's, it's it's a lot of fun. But there, but this St. Mary's, I mean, that's what's so great. Are these games are so close? We were asking Mark Pope about Randy Bennett, and he said he had kind of the best analogy I've, I've heard. He said he could take five guys from the YMCA and compete out on <laughs> on any court and stuff. He's just such a good coach. And that's the thing is they don't have to have superstars. They don't have to have NBA talent. But you know, Coach Bennett's going to bring it every time, and it's going to be. A close game. It's gonna. Your heart's gonna pound. It's gonna be. It's gonna be tough. Well, Rand, the the scheme that Randy Bennett has come up with with his team for years now is it's kind of the slow and steady and very consistent. And yes, you can kind of just plug in players. And he obviously is. They're very good at getting foreign players into their program. And uh, he's just handpicked the players, and and they perfectly fit into his his scheme. And he can just win year in and year out they're they're sort of having a down year but they also have some injuries on the team and and other things happening some some of their production has graduated but i mean fourth fourth place in the wcc in a down year they're, they're worse things you know yeah but no. they're still a threat oh still they're a threat always a threat and that's what kind of makes it fun and, and that's why the conference goes all right let's put some fun byu's already played gonzaga let's put some fun games on the end of the schedule that'll matter and and hey we all want to watch Cougar basketball, so I'm I'm excited. I'm happy for it. That's right. Let's quickly talk about uh, that San Francisco game with Caleb Lohner's dunk, his two-hand jam. It reminded me of the Nintendo game. It was a Nintendo game. I don't even know what system, but NBA Jam, oh, where yeah. they just get up and slam it down and break the rim and the backboard. That. It was incredible. That was an incredible display of athleticism. You know, it's funny. We've been talking about him all year. When are we going to see it? When are we going to see that monster jam? There was that couple, that one against Utah where he went up and you just thought, oh, no, oh, no. And then it didn't happen. But it, it's fun <laughs> to see it when it actually happens. But the best part is, is we've got three more years of him perfecting that and doing it. Yeah, that was that was a fun dunk. I love that because the three seniors that are graduating, I, I just can't help but think I wish we had – more time with these guys but then you see Caleb Lohner and everything that he's doing and, and it makes you excited for the future right oh absolutely this and this team has so many uh guys who've gotten a lot of experience this year so much coming back next year like obviously Mark Pope's just building a program he's building consistency and that's that's what matters and that's what's gonna keep BYU afloat for a long time Amen. All right, up next for BYU Men's Hoops is Senior Night against St. Mary's. We'll talk to Alex Jensen, the radio play-by-play for the Gales, up next. This is Cougar Tailgate. Tailgate. I'm Lauren McLean. St. Mary's has a history of success in the WCC that only Gonzaga and BOU can rival. And Coach Bennett has created consistency in Moraga. And to talk about St. Mary's hoops, we have their longtime play-by-play man, Alex Jensen. Welcome to the Cougars Tailgate, Alex. Lauren, thank you for having me. Um, I can't believe the regular season is over already, or almost over already, in some ways, mercifully. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm excited I'm excited just from a basketball standpoint to get to the point where we can enter a week and know who your team is playing on Thursday and Saturday and that those games will happen. Uh, but thank you for having me. I'm, I'm excited for the game tomorrow. Yes, you bet. And who knows when we're actually going to get to that point. And we're all, we're all praying it's next year, right? <laughs> we'll see what happens in the world in the meantime. But uh, you and I were just talking before we started this, and you told me that you played baseball at St. Mary's. What years did you play? Uh, well, I was a junior college transfer, so I grew up in the Bay Area uh, here in Oakland, actually, and went to a junior college right around here, which is the closest junior college to St. Mary's. Okay. And uh, so I was there in 2000, let me see here, fall of 2006 to the spring of 2008. I graduated in 2008. So, uh, man, I can't believe, I mean, shoot, we're closing on almost 15 years since I was in college. <laughs> it's uh makes me feel old. I just but, wanted yeah, to the, make you feel old. That was all. That's I all I wanted that. to accomplish. Yeah, you bet. Thank you, you bet. Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. It actually sounds like we're probably around the same age, so don't feel too bad. But okay. this to Fair also enough. make you feel old, this is your ninth year as the play-by-play for St. Mary's basketball. What is one of your favorite memories of St. Mary's? Um, well, it's easy to go the Delva Dagger route, being on BYU radio. Uh, that, that was my first <laughs> year, actually. 
we were talking about it before uh, you, you hit record here. That was my first year, but that was such – that was a great game. I mean, you know, every, every game, it seems, between St. Mary's and BYU ends up being close. I can – I can only, you know, you can count the blowouts or the one-sided games really on one hand mm-hmm. uh, that since BYU entered the West Coast Conference that uh, St. Mary's and BYU have played each other. So that's one of them. Every trip to the West Coast Conference tournament has been great. The, 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 but I think the best memory for me – is a 2019 title game uh, when St. Mary's beat at that point, number one Gonzaga with uh, Rui Hachimura and Brandon Clark and Josh Perkins. I mean, they, they were, they were a massive underdog in that game and to, to win that game the way they did hold Gonzaga to 47 points and culminate with what I really felt was a season that they really built upon their successes, especially the last month to reach the NCAA tournament with the win against, you know, over their arch rival when they're number one in the country to revalidate that rivalry, um, that's got to be the top for me. Oh, I love that. So Greg Rebell is the play-by-play guy for BYU. And if you listen to him, he gets extremely excited when BYU (laughs) does something well. As the play-by-play guy, how do you – I mean, you you don't have to be unbiased, right, because you're the play-by-play guy for that school. How do you sort of contain your excitement, though, sometimes, especially being an alum of that school when you're calling a game like that? Uh, you know, I've learned, I, I've listened to myself quite a bit and I, I, I like to think that I'm better at doing that now than when I first started. I mean, when it comes down to it, we're all fans, right? I right. Mean, you know, I mean, I, I went to St. Mary's, obviously I'm a St. Mary's fan. I know everybody and, and you know, Greg Rebell, I'm sure included uh, all which, and I feel like we have a great mix, Lauren, of broadcasters in the West coast conference. I just feel like it's a really good group, but I feel like when it comes down to it, like we're all fans of our program and, and what makes it more intimate is the relationships you build within the program with the coaching staff, with the players. I mean, you really want to see these guys do well. So it's hard sometimes to contain your excitement, <laughs> but a lot of listening to myself. Um, my, my girlfriend is also in the industry. So, so she has helped me a lot with that. I try not to yell too much. So yeah, it, it can be hard at times because, you know, like I said, I, I think all of us radio broadcasters in the league are, are part of are, are an extension of the program, really a part of the program. Um, so it's hard at times, but I, I try and do my best at least not to yell, but yeah, you, you gotta, I mean, it's, it's a hometown broadcast, right? You, you, right. you gotta, you gotta, I don't want to be a full Homer, but you gotta be a little bit of one, right? Exactly. I mean, and that's what resonates with people. I love that your girlfriend's like, honey, you got to tone it down a little bit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're yelling just a little bit too much. So exactly. St. Mary's this season, I wouldn't call it a down season. They've done great. Maybe not, uh, to the extent of they've done in, in previous years, but as the season winds down, what's something from this year's team that you're going to remember? How tough they are, how gritty they are. Um, I mean, they, this has been a season. I mean, it's been a season unlike any, any other for several teams, but for St. Mary's, there's so many layers to this year. Um, you know, they, they lose, uh, let's see, they lose three quarters of their scoring for, from a year ago. Uh, they lose half their rebounds, 60% of their minutes from last season. And then they, you know, I mean, they, they, they looked like they were, you know, kind of turning the corner maybe in December. And uh, then they have a couple of key injuries to two of their best shooters. So uh, they have to change their roles once again. And, you know, then when I feel like they're getting some momentum, Road wins over LMU in San Francisco. They go on pause for three weeks and they don't practice for 10 days. And then they have to kind of start over. And then they go on the road at Pepperdine and Gonzaga. Two tough places to play after you've, after you've gone through that. So right. now they're trying to, now they're starting to turn the corner again. But I'll, what I'll remember most is this team's toughness. I mean, Dan Foto, um, Kyle Bowen, Matthias Toss, Logan Johnson, Tommy Cousy just had a senior night last night, mm-hmm. uh, which was nice that his parents were able to be in town. I mean, this guy was a walk on to start his career, just earned a scholarship this year in his fifth season in Moraga. Um, And he's really embodied a guy who has bought in a hundred percent to the program and it's paid off for him because he's leading the team in scoring. He's leading him in assists. He's top five in the WCC in assists and minutes. And so I'll just remember this team's toughness. I mean, it hasn't always gone according to plan um, this season for St. Mary's, but they've stuck together. And I think they're starting to play some of their best basketball since the holidays. Mm, it's a, it's good timing right there. And I think that's important for teams to go through that every once in a while. 
uh, in order to build some of the things that you can't get when you're consistently winning. You know, you, you need to have that every once in a while and you, you can get more gritty and, and more toughness there. So this year has been obviously unlike any other, what's one game day tradition from the players or student section that you've missed most during this weird basketball year? Man, that's a good question. Um, the Gales, uh, you know, for anybody that has followed St. Mary's program uh, at all, know is familiar with their their connection to Australia. And uh, there, there's there's two Aussies on the team this season. There's, you know, it's the, the least amount of Aussies the Gales have had in probably a decade. They've had as many as seven, I think, at times. But <laughs> last night, uh, they got to celebrate Australian Heritage Night, which was postponed from uh, Australia Day, which is in the middle of January. That's right when they went on pause um, but traditionally they didn't do it last night, but traditionally they play the Australian national anthem before the game, but just before the, the American, the star spangled banner. And one of my favorite moments every year is looking over to, to, you know, our team and, and seeing the, the pride on the, on our Aussies face when the Australian national anthem gets pl- played, you know, there's a, there's a, the, uh, boomer flag the you know, the kangaroo with the boxing gloves, I'm sure you're familiar with it. That hangs in, in UCU pavilion, which is where the Gales play. And the students always have like an inflatable kangaroo, um, you know, in the student (laughs) section. So I I think that that's, that's probably it. Just the the way that the fan base has really embraced the Australian culture and our our Australian players, you know, both of our players in the NBA right now from St. Mary's are both Mm. Australian, Patty Mills and Matthew Delvadova. Both their jerseys hang in the rafters at University Cred Union Pavilion in Moraga. So I, I think just that interaction between the fans and the players, it's such an intimate feel, Lauren, in, in Moraga. I mean, you know, after, it's like a high school game where after the game, you know, there's fans all over the floor, uh, you know, interacting with the players once they come out from the locker room. It's just it, I, I just think that that connection between the, the program and the fan base is, is what I miss the most. Oh, I think that's so cool. And probably a rare thing, honestly, and that you you can't get at some of these larger schools. And I love that they, they make the foreigners feel so at home, especially the Australians. That is such a cool thing. I've never been to a game there, so I'll have to do it. And hopefully we can get all the fans back next year and make it happen. No doubt. And, you know, if you do come out for a St. Mary's BYU game, uh, it's packed, it gets packed in there. It only holds 3,500 people, but it gets loud. It gets hot. Um, it's a, it's just a, it's a fun place. A, a, a quick story. Mark Emmert, who's the president of the NC2A, um, came to St. Mary's a few years ago. And I'm, Mike Matosa, who's the Gales, uh, VP of intercollegiate athletics, a athletic director. That's his official title though. Um, <laughs> but I guess Mark Emmert told him like, this is, this is what college basketball should be. You know, it is a, is a small gym, a lot of passion. And, and like I said, it gets really loud. It gets really hot in there. Uh, it, it's a fun place to watch a game. So you know, when, when you come out, we'll, we'll make sure to, uh, to make you feel at home. I love that. And I, I'm going to try and make it happen. So on the flip side, you have BYU that has the Marriott Center, I think the biggest in the yeah. WCC. What, what's one thing you miss about the, the fan experience when you come to BYU? Oh, the passion of BYU fans. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, rivaled in few places in the country, in the conference, in the country. And every, every fan base, obviously, you know, is, is passionate. But, you know, BYU, I, I miss pulling up to the Marriott Center for practice the night before and seeing tents outside uh, in the snow. You know, so I just think that the passion of the BYU fans is, is something that I'm, I'm going to miss this season. I, I can't wait to, to be back in in uh, in 2022, hopefully, you know, um, but, uh, yeah, I just, you know, you can feel it in the building, um, with the students, with, with all the fans. Um, so I, I, and it, it really comes through. I mean, they, they love the Cougars, obviously that, that fan base does. And, um, there's no doubt about that. So I'll, I'll really miss, I'll miss the passion. I mean, last year's game in, in Provo with the TJ Hawes buzzer beater, I mean, you really felt it and it was, it was a tough (laughs) moment for St. Mary's, but you really felt the pride in the, in the, in the program and in, in their school that, that the fan base has. So uh, I'll miss that. And I'm looking forward to it again in 2022. There really has been an insane amount of back and forth between BYU and St. Mary's. It's so much fun. I'm pretty sure we've asked this before, but what is a Gale? A Gale uh, for um, St. Mary's purposes is essentially an Irish knight. Uh, So, you know, I mean, the way I always kind of, uh, draw a parallel is like the Boston Celtics 
the Celtic culture, right? That's, uh, yes. that's a uh-huh. take off of the Celtic culture. The Gales is a take off of the Gaelic culture, which is another Irish uh, culture, like Gaelic language. So that's what a Gale is. But for, for St. Mary's purposes, they have a great throwback logo. I encourage you, if you're listening to this right now, <laughs> go back and look up the Galloping Gale logo. It's, it's such a cool, like 1970s-ish cartoony, uh, you know, knight riding a horse. St. Mary's actually had a red jersey that they've worn the last couple of years. They, they didn't wear it this season, but uh, it's got that logo on it. And I think it's such a great look. Uh, so if you, if you want to know what a gale is for St. Mary's purposes, look up Galloping Gale and you'll have your answer. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Some of those throwback jerseys are or not even jerseys, but those logos are the best. Oh, for, they're awesome. For a the bunch Sailor of the Coog schools. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? I know. I love it. All right. So last question for you is what is a player or storyline that we need to watch out for in tonight's game? On the court? Yes. Yeah, or, or honestly, on or off the court? On or off the court. Well, let's start with on the court. Logan Johnson is becoming, uh, in my opinion, this team's best player. He, uh, he's a transfer from Cincinnati, played sparingly a year ago behind, you know, Ford, uh, Jordan Ford and Tommy Cousy and Tanner Krebs. But I think he's, he's starting to assume a leadership role going forward in this program. You know, it's still Tommy Cousy is still the leader because he, you know, he's a fifth-year senior. He's been there, done that. But Logan Johnson uh, is becoming a guy for St. Mary's. I mean, he's averaging over 15 points per game in league play. Um, you know, he's starting to share the ball a little bit. Um, and when Randy Bennett's teams are at their best, you really have two point guards on the floor. So that's Cousy and Logan Johnson. Off the court. Again, I, I just think Tommy Cousy's story is so incredible. He, he was a walk-on for four years, earned a scholarship this season, and uh, it, it was really a bummer for him last night on his senior night that there couldn't be a full house there to send him off because mm-hmm. – potentially send him off anyway. I mean, you know, these guys have another year of eligibility if they choose. Right. But um, he's just – I mean, being around this guy, he's given everything he has to the program, and he's turned himself into a really good player and, and the leader – the leader of a, of a team that, you know, um, when they were fully healthy, I thought had a good chance at the NCAA tournament. And we, we talked about how we, the, everything that St. Mary's has been through this season. But uh, so, yeah, on the court, I think Logan Johnson has really emerged in all, as an all-league player. Tommy Cousy is such a great story because he was a walk-on and he's turned himself into the unquestioned leader of this team. All right. I'm excited to see what drama unfolds in tonight's game. (laughs) (laughs) Alex Jensen, play-by-play man for St. Mary's Hoops. Thank you so much for taking the time with us today. Lauren, thanks for having me. I'm I'm looking forward to uh, tomorrow's game and uh, the West Coast Conference Tournament. All right. Thanks so much, Alex. We'll talk to you soon. And that does it for us today, folks. Thanks again to Alex Jensen, the St. Mary's play-by-play, and Dave Phillips Jr. for coming on with me today. You can join the Cougar Tailgate virtually, of course, every Saturday at noon Mountain Time or download, rate, and review our podcast on Apple, TuneIn, Stitcher, Spotify, or on BYUradio.org. Get ready for the men's hoops regular season finale tonight. This is Cougar Tailgate. Cougar Tailgate.